If you're busy doing literally all the things in your design business, it might be time to hire. In today's episode, I'll be helping you determine if that time is now. We'll raise a glass while we think tank how to bring more joy, abundance, and balance to your interior design firm. I'm Sandra Funk, and this is Design Sips. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Design Sips. Welcome, everyone. Grab a drink. Mmm. It's a rosé day. Yeah, that looks great. For sure. <laughs> okay, so Valentina asks, how do I know when it's the right time to hire? Mm, okay, so it's the right time to hire when you have, you're busy with the current client load, you have clients waiting to work for you, right? They are literally committed to you and they are going to wait until you have room in your schedule and you've got some cash reserves. So you've made some money that's still sitting there in that business, and then you know you are in position to hire. Sounds um, simple. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit more about your first experience when you were like, yep, it's time. So um, I started my business as a one-woman show. I was just kind of bootstrapping my things as I was going along, and I had... Um, had, I was like starting my family at the same time. My husband was working in the city, crazy, crazy hours. We had a dog and a house and all the things, right? Busy life. And um, my, it was the same thing. My client load was massive. I had people willing to wait to work for me, with me, right? Interior design clients waiting to work for me. I can't say that, with me. And um, I had been so busy with the clients and so busy with everything going on that I hadn't had any time to spend any of my profits. So I had the reserves in my bank account and it was very clear to me that it was time for me to get help because again, I had some savings, I had the pipeline and it was time for me to increase my capacity so I could move these projects through the process faster, make the clients more happy by finishing jobs faster and of course, start to scale the business. Right, exactly. So, yeah. so many, when we do have this conversation in our community, we do get some pushback or just really concern because the industry is so feast or famine. It is. And it, and this is what happens, right? Especially if you take on larger jobs, like it's, you know, you're so busy with these big jobs and then they come to an end and it's like a cliff, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, like, it's wonderful because you've completed a job, but it's also every time you complete a project, you work yourself out of a job and need a whole new, incredibly huge, beautiful client to come in and fill that space. So that's one of the reasons that we are always marketing, right? Even when we are jammed busy and there's clients waiting for us, we're still marketing because after these beautiful clients that are there currently and the ones that are waiting, we still need more because what a client, what an interior designer always needs is the next client and the next client and the next client, right? So always marketing so we can keep filling that pipeline. And then that famine feeling, like the, when you finish a job, that feeling of where will my next client come from? Will the phone ever ring again? If you're always marketing and you're always putting yourself out there, it'll be less scary because you'll be having conversations with potential clients all the time even if you can't take them on right now, you're letting them know exactly when you'll be able to start work with them. So stop the idea that we don't even need to market, we don't even need to talk to potential clients if you're currently, your plate is full, always be setting them up. We're starting, we're booking into the fall, we're booking into the spring, we're booking into the winter. Like think further out so that you can start to build a more consistent long-term pipeline and get off the roller coaster. That's the goal. Mm -hmm, exactly. And if designers are just too fearful to make that big leap, are there other options in terms of hiring that can be more flux? Yes, absolutely. If you can't seem to get the feast or famine feelings to kind of calm down, right? Um, freelance uh, agencies, experts, right? There's a wonderful, wonderful world out there. The world has shifted. And it is wonderful because there are, there are interior designers that work freelance, there are bookkeepers, there are expediters, there are virtual assistants, administrative staff, marketing staff, 
you name it, there is somebody out there that can work on an hourly freelance basis for your firm to allow you to feel comfortable as you roll through the changes, right? So I do this still. I have moved across the country, middle of my design career, and so I have freelancers in where I moved from help me with those projects that are still going there because it's on an as-needed basis. It's not day in, day out chomping at the bit. It's perfect. It's perfect for the when needed kind of roller coaster that I'm on over there. And if your firm is in that mode, it's a perfect opportunity for freelance. If you are like, again, filled to the gills, people are waiting for you, reserve, reserves of cash in the bank, the most optimum way to go is a full-time hire. You get more bang for your buck, you can train them up over the long haul, they can be a more reliable and consistent um, staff for you, right? As opposed to freelance that you might reach out to them and they might be busy that day because they freelance for others and not just you, obviously. So um, there's just lots of ways to do this. And when it comes to getting help and delegating and building the team and scaling, I don't want you to think it's all or nothing, that it's 40 hours, a whole salary, you know, have to figure out benefits or nothing. There are so many, so many options. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So a resource that we use in our business is so helpful when trying to forecast, you know, hey, I, it looks like I'm in a full pipeline for a while. It might be time to hire. And that is called the forecast revenue pipeline. Mm -hmm. You want to tell us where that came from, what yep. it is? There's like a fuzzy attacking me. Um, that The forecast revenue pipeline is this like beautiful Excel spreadsheet or Google sheet, whatever, I don't know. I think <laughs> Google it, and Excel. Google and Excel, it exists in both. Um, but it's this beautiful spreadsheet that basically takes you through the life, the lifespan of a project and it has every single one of our clients this way and then how far they are in the process that way. And so I can see that I've got like my kind of, my comfort zone is like nine projects at a time, nine nice big projects at a time. So we'll have those nine projects going here, or maybe we're just like finishing up one, so we're on eight and we're about to onboard the next one, right? But when I can see that in that big project forecast, I know exactly when all nine of my projects are supposed to wrap up, so I can be speaking to potential clients about early fall, late you know, June, etc. I can be very clear with them on when I can start their project, approximately, of course. And I can also see, I better get marketing. I've got three big ones wrapping up all at the same time, three months out. Like I better really start stoking the fires and getting some really great potential clients in here and get this lined up. I can see if I'm booked out for 18 months ahead and I need to really think about staff because I am solid and I do have this really full pipeline. I've got clients waiting in the wings. I've got the current clients are going great. Like. It's so, so good to see where it starts to trickle off or where it is just full on, um, full throttle and, and to really understand and talk through with potential clients like where they're gonna fit. And so you wanna pipeline in your potential clients like when this one finishes, this one's first, then that one's gonna come in. Like you wanna pipeline them out as well so they know exactly where they're gonna be in your pipeline. And um, this is what I wish for you, that you are in demand to the level where people are waiting, you know, three to six months to work with you. I think that's an incredible goal to have. And if you can, if you can actually speak to when you'll be available and you can, and you can make that normal, um, and you can make that just matter of fact, then that is what you will have, right? It's just having the knowledge and the ability to speak to it that it will become your reality, that you're just gonna roll right into the next project. Um, which won't give you that feast or famine roller coaster anymore. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And what I love about this resource is it's not our sexiest one uh, that we provide in the interior design standard. True. Sandra's signature program. But uh, we had a member reach out and she was like, I love this resource. Didn't even know it was in here. But for these exact Buried. recons for yeah. uh, marketing, hiring, um, and when she needs to plan on all the things really. Yeah, yeah, it's really understanding the flow of what needs to happen next. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. Okay, so there is a ton of hesitation around hiring because of the training and onboarding involved. Uh, this is a big thing we hear a lot from designers. So what do you say to them when thinking through the pros and cons of it's, it's time? 
Yep. So I remember this feeling when I was first hiring, like I just felt so overwhelmed. I didn't even feel like I could stop and write a job description or even figure out where to post it, let alone interview people, train them. Like it's so overwhelming in the beginning, but what I know to be true is that <laughs> that first hire's task might be to shadow you and to document processes, right? Um, you really have to start to get creative, like bring your creativity to your HR process and um, First and foremost, if you're too busy to even consider how you're going to hire, just start telling people that you're hiring. Just start talking about it with people and then, well, what kind of a position and just start talking about it and then write that down, write down that conversation. Like, here's what I need. Here's what I'm thinking, right? One of my biggest tips is don't hire a mini you. Make sure that you are hiring someone who compliments you that doesn't mirror you. So for instance, if you love the floor planning and the and the finishes and the big picture concept, but you really are okay with somebody else doing the CAD and the procurement, then CAD and procurement is what you're gonna look for when you put that job description together. Don't just put a job description together that says, you know, junior designer, because junior designers wanna do layouts, concepts, designs, for, you know, finishing plans, like they, that's exactly what they want to be working on. So be more specific. I'm looking for, um, maybe it's two people, maybe it's freelance, a CAD freelancer and a procurement expert, right? Now you're going expert level. They've done it before. They've done it over and over and over again. They will need less training, right? If this is something that they do naturally because they are a procurement expert and a CAD expert. So they are gonna to get to know your firm, you're gonna to need to give, you know, you're gonna to need to onboard them, you're gonna to need to spend some time with them, but it will be worth its weight in gold with expert freelancers and or with a full-time hire. You do have to put in the time in the beginning. It is so crazy important to train them and spend time with them and set expectations and have touch bases, all of it. But it is also worth, like it is time consuming, but it is worth it because you will never scale. You will never be able to take on more. You will never be able to work faster or more efficiently than you are right now as a one woman show, as a one human show. If you don't increase your productivity, increase your efficiency and probably start delegating, right? So one of the things the standard does so well is it hands you the systems and processes. It literally gives you the structure so that you can download that into your firm and then turn around and use those videos and use those resources to train new staff when they come in. I use the standard to train my staff because it's all there. So why would I spend my breath saying it again when I really literally put them through the standard and it's a huge, beautiful way to onboard new employees. Um, I think that's the end of my answer to that question. <laughs> yes. Cheers, y'all. No, we love the standard internally for training and we know hundreds of designers of our members are loving it too. Um, Anna Caro from Motive Interiors is a member and she reached out and said having my virtual assistant take the standard is really shifting our productivity and setting me up to hire a full-time employee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, At being able to like let them understand the business from that standpoint right out of the gate is incredible. And then there's an entire HR module inside the standard. So what we do provide for you is the job descriptions, is the postings, is the HR framework of touch bases and, and like all the details on how to manage an employee because that's another barrier to entry, right? I hear from so many designers, I don't want to manage people. And it's just a fear. It's just an unknown. It's just the, the murky, don't know what that's going to entail, right? But um, that's a big part of why we put that module in there so that it wasn't, it wasn't uh, the scary unknown. It was, it was very clear and just very defined and something that could be tackled. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so if you're slammed and need to start hiring and cannot take on one more potential client, we have the episode for you. How to say no to potential clients <laughs> <laughs> that aren't the right fit. Right there. Here's the one. Yeah, I love this. Um, when you start to get out of feast or famine, right? Because you start to build your pipeline, you start to like say, only, you know, attract all the good clients. You are going to be able to say no to the ones that aren't a great fit for you, and you need to know how to do that. We got you covered. Alrighty, All right, guys. Thank you for joining. That's all, y'all. Cheers. Have a great one. See you next time.